Number 10. Araucum Ship Graveyard The Aral Sea was once the world's fourth largest inland sea, and it was home to a thriving fishing industry. That all changed during the 1960s when the Soviet government diverted the rivers feeding the sea for an irrigation project. It began to slowly dry up, leaving behind a poisonous salty wasteland known as the Aralcom Desert. The shrinking body of water's salt levels became toxic, killing all of its marine life and causing the fishing industry to die out. Straddling the modern-day border between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, the Aralcom Desert is littered with rusted fishing boats that were abandoned decades ago as residents left in search of better opportunities elsewhere. What little is left of the Aral Sea consists of a lake about a tenth of its former size, and its glory days are a distant memory marked by the decaying remnants of ships left abandoned. The ghost ships lie at the edge of former seaside towns, including the once bustling city of Moynak, where the derelict vessels are accompanied by crumbling buildings. The small number of locals who stayed in the area are plagued by health problems from the hazardous dust that constantly blows around. There's been a growing effort in recent years to revive the Aral Sea, which is once again being fed by the rivers that it was cut off from. Its salinity has decreased and fish have returned. But it's hard to say whether the sea will ever be restored to its former splendor, or if the expanding body of water will submerge the depressing ghost ships. Number 9. The Macedonium In 1903, a group of Macedonian revolutionaries led a revolt in a fight for their independence from the Ottoman Empire. Known as the Alinden Uprising, it was initially successful and led to the establishment of a local administration called the Khrushchevo Republic. But the Ottomans fought back with overwhelming force and ultimately quelled the rebellion. They punished the dissenters by destroying their homes and executing them en masse. Historians estimate that at least 9,000 homes were ruined, leaving 4,600 people dead and thousands of others homeless. 71 years later in 1974, a memorial to the uprising opened in North Macedonia. Nicknamed the Macedonium, the bizarre round structure is covered in protruding oval-shaped windows. The abandoned monument is incredibly unusual looking. It has an almost Jetson-like space-age appearance. Some have likened its shape to a giant virus, and at first glance it bears no obvious connections to the rebellion or the atrocities that followed. Located on a hilltop overlooking the city of Khrushchevo from 4,000 feet above, the strange building houses the tomb of the short-lived Khrushchevo Republic's president Nikola Karev. Outside, there's a series of sculptures called Breaking the Chains, which represent the Macedonian fight for freedom that was eventually achieved, as well as a small amphitheater surrounded by colorful mosaics. Number 8. Kalyazin Bell Tower During the 1930s, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin ordered the construction of a dam on the upper Volga River in the city of Kalyazin as part of his efforts to modernize the country. The project resulted in the creation of the Uglish Reservoir, which flooded two 15th and 16th century monasteries and several other buildings in the area. Everything was completely covered in water except for the bell tower of the St. Nicholas Cathedral, which protrudes 244 feet out of the water. Built in 1796, it serves as the only remaining reminder of the historic village. The area around the belfry was filled in to create a small island, and the area soon became one of the main tourist attractions in Russia's Tver Oblast region. There's nothing remarkable inside the tower, but curious visitors nevertheless take ferries to the site to get a closer look at it. During the winter, the reservoir freezes, and the tower can be reached on foot. It currently functions as a lighthouse and is occasionally used for Orthodox Christian ceremonies. Number 7. Wanli UFO Village Roughly an hour's drive outside the Taiwanese capital of Taipei, there's an abandoned holiday resort that looks like something out of a decades-old sci-fi movie. Known as the Wanli UFO Village or the Sanji Village, the crumbling oval-shaped structures represent the failed vision of Finnish architect Mati Suronen. Built during the 1970s and 80s, the development offered two types of houses, Futuro dwellings, which resembled flying saucers, and Venturo homes, which were slightly more normal-looking but still had a futuristic feel. The project was abandoned during the 1980s for reasons that remain unclear to this day. Some people still live in these bizarre prefabricated homes, but most are empty and some parts of the village have been demolished. Ironically, the development has become more popular in its current state as an attraction that draws curious urban explorers. Nature has retaken the site. Grass grows through the cement and the rusting homes are filled with telltale signs of decomposition, including faded paintings, caved-in roofs, shattered windows, and misshapen walls. Long-standing rumors claim that there are plans to fully demolish the village and build something more promising in its place, but it hasn't happened yet. And Taiwan's tourism industry seems to be benefiting from the decrepit neighborhood that was never fully occupied, 
indicating that perhaps the government chooses to leave what's left of it standing. Number 6. Pennsylvania Turnpike When it opened in 1940, the Pennsylvania Turnpike was nicknamed the Tunnel Highway because it passed through seven tunnels. Unfortunately, it wasn't designed for efficiency. Each tunnel reduced the road to just one lane for traffic going in both directions, leading to chronic congestion and frequent traffic jams. The problematic 13-mile stretch of road was abandoned in 1968 after a new bypass was built. It's been closed to motor vehicle traffic ever since, and nature has reclaimed its surroundings. In what resembles a scene from a post-apocalyptic film, the once bustling segment of road and tunnels runs straight through the middle of the woods. For several years, there have been plans to turn the disused highway into a bike path. Whether or not this will happen remains to be seen, but for now, the dilapidated road is open to those who are willing to take their chances on cracked pavement that hasn't been maintained in over 50 years. Number 5. Rubjerg Knuda Lighthouse Shifting sands along Denmark's coastline are swallowing up an old lighthouse in the country's North Jutland region that has sat abandoned since 2002. Known as the Rubjerg Knuda Lighthouse, the 75-foot-tall structure sits roughly 200 feet above the water on a cliff overlooking the North Sea. Built in 1899, the lighthouse operated until 1968. For several decades afterward, it housed a museum and a coffee shop, but it became a losing battle to keep the building clear of the sand that continuously accumulated around it, and its caretakers eventually gave up. Winds from the sea continued to blow sand toward the lighthouse as the coast erodes to the tune of five feet every year. As a result, the structure's surroundings have changed dramatically over the years. Several nearby buildings lost their battle against the elements in 2009 and were removed. But for now, the lighthouse still stands. It was moved inland in 2019 in an effort to preserve it for as long as possible. By then, erosion had brought the lighthouse just feet from the cliff's edge, and it faced the ever-increasing threat of toppling into the sea below. In fact, this is precisely what would have happened if it had remained where it was. Experts expect the lighthouse to remain safe in its current place until 2060, at which point officials will once again be faced with the decision of what to do with it. Does it make sense to continue to move the lighthouse, or should it just be abandoned to the elements? Share your opinion in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Number 4. Burj Al Babas Halfway between Turkey's largest city Istanbul and its capital Ankara, there's an abandoned hillside settlement consisting of 732 pristine-looking miniature castle-like chalets in various states of completion. Construction on the unfinished settlement known as Burj Al Babas began in 2014. Each three-story chalet was designed to look identical on the outside while allowing buyers to customize the interiors. The project was abandoned just four years later when the development company went bankrupt. All of its investors pulled out and the future of the chalets remains uncertain to this day. Plans to finish the homes and build a movie theater, Turkish bath and sports facilities are on hold indefinitely. Over $200 million went into the project before it ground to a screeching halt seemingly out of nowhere. Consequently, the settlement looks more like a dystopian nightmare than an upscale neighborhood for wealthy homeowners. Number 3. Lake Reshen Bell Tower Lake Reshen is a man-made body of water in northern Italy's South Tyrol province near the Austrian and Swiss borders. Located in the Italian Alps, the lake is famous for a partially submerged 14th-century steeple that protrudes from its surface. Plans to create the lake for a hydroelectric power plant date back to 1920. It was originally meant to be much smaller and shallower, but in 1930 a local chemical company proposed bringing two natural lakes together. This would create a much larger body of water and would require builders to submerge several villages. The project was delayed several times by World War II and local residents who understandably did not want their villages underwater. But they eventually lost the battle to save their homes, and in 1950, water poured into the Vinchgau Valley, flooding 163 houses and nearly 2,000 acres of cultivated land. Before filling the lake, workers demolished the nave of the Church of St. Katharina and removed the bells from its steeple. Sadly, there's very little left of this historic place of worship, which was founded in 1357 and once stood as a testament to the region's long and robust history. But the bell tower was left in place and has since become somewhat of a tourist attraction. The lake has even been drained a few times so that workers could perform maintenance on it, ensuring the steeple continues to stand as a reminder of a village that the authorities at the time thought was unworthy of saving. Even though the tower no longer has any bells, local legend claims that they can sometimes be heard ringing during the winter. Number 2. JFK's Bunker As the Cold War heated up in the late 1950s, the decision was made to build a small bunker for then-President John F. Kennedy near his family's home in Palm Beach, Florida. 
Located on a 79-acre man-made landmass known as Peanut Island, it would be JFK's go-to shelter in the event of a nuclear attack. Known as the Detachment Hotel, it was just a five-minute helicopter ride away from Palm Beach. The clandestine bunker was built in late 1960, shortly before JFK's inauguration. Designed to house 30 people for up to a month, it was accessible via a hidden entrance and a series of metal tubes buried beneath 12 feet of dirt. A nearby U.S. Coast Guard station provided cover for the top-secret project. The site was closed following JFK's assassination in 1963, and its existence was declassified in 1974. It fell into disrepair until the 1990s when the Palm Beach Maritime Museum restored it and opened it to the public. Visitors gained a first-hand look at the overgrown bunker and its contents, including its decontamination and radio rooms. Sadly, the site closed in 2017 when the Port of Palm Beach took ownership of the property. By then, storms had heavily damaged the bunker and mold had become pervasive. The structure was unstable and the air inside was unsafe to breathe. After years of negotiations, officials agreed to a new lease that will allow for the preservation of the bunker along with a much-needed restoration. The project is expected to take two to three years before visitors are once again permitted at the site. Until then, the waters around Peanut Island remain a popular drinking and party spot, with many local beachgoers having no clue that their ruckus boat and sandbar parties are occurring just beyond the remnants of a former presidential bomb shelter. Number 1. Winchester Mystery House Sarah Winchester was an incredibly wealthy widow who became convinced that she was cursed after her husband's death in 1881. Intent on ridding herself of the curse, she moved from New Haven, Connecticut to an unfinished farmhouse in San Jose, California. She hired a crew to expand the house and told them to work on the project day and night. Sarah didn't hire an architect or have a real plan. All she knew was that she wanted the construction on her home to go on forever. Building continued for 38 years until her death in 1922. During that time, the house went from a simple eight-room structure to a nonsensical seven-story mansion with 160 rooms, 10,000 windows, and 2,000 doors. One door leads directly to a 15-foot drop into the garden below. Another is situated eight feet above a kitchen sink. Some staircases intersect with ceilings rather than the next floor. There's also a series of hidden passages and rooms, including a collection of 30 rooms concealed behind a cabinet door. Some think that Sarah believed she would die if the house was ever finished, or that she created the confusing interior to mislead the spirits that she thought were following her. After she died, the house was declared worthless for a variety of reasons. It had an incredibly impractical layout, it was unfinished, and because it had been damaged in an earthquake. With no other practical use than to satisfy curious visitors, it was open to the public just months after the distraught widow's death. In addition to being a popular tourist destination, the bizarre mansion inspired Stephen King's Rose Red miniseries. Number 10. The Lost City of Atlit Yam Can you imagine swimming in your favorite sea spot? Then boom, you see an entire city standing on the seabed. The legend of Atlantis has motivated many divers and archaeologists to search for lost cities underwater. While none have found the legendary Atlantis, they have discovered other lost cities of the seas. Back in 1984, deep-sea divers looking for shipwrecks discovered the ancient city of Adlit Yam. The prehistoric fishing village drowned 9,000 years ago, likely because of a tsunami or climate change. It remains one of the best-preserved submerged settlements in the world. According to the Times of Israel, excavations and surveys conducted between 1985 to 2000 revealed even more. Sea level rise forced the inhabitants of the Neolithic village to abandon their homes several times for higher ground. Studying their technology and artifacts reveals how they coped with a changing climate. Within Atlit Yam, divers found the earliest known constructed fresh water wells with stone walls still intact. Human remains buried at the site also helped archaeologists uncover the earliest known cases of human tuberculosis in the bones of a mother and a baby. This discovery showed signs scientists that the disease is 3,000 years older than previously speculated. Scientists believe that the inhabitants of Adlit Yam abandoned it suddenly because of a tsunami hitting the region, probably caused by a volcanic eruption in the Mediterranean area. Large piles of fish discovered at the site appear to support their theory. Number 9. 50-pound mammoth leg bone In May 2021, two scuba divers made a gigantic discovery of prehistoric proportions. In Florida's Peace River, embedded in the sand, they found a 4-foot, 50-pound mammoth leg bone. The once-in-a-lifetime discovery could date back as far as the Ice Age. The well-mineralized bone was almost entirely undamaged. It came from a Colombian mammoth. This type of mammoth was the largest of its kind. Paleontologists estimate that the animal stood 14 feet tall and weighed about the same amount as five cars stacked on top of each other. Their tusks reached wider than 
than two bicycles laid end to end. Mammoths, the ancestors of modern day elephants, went extinct about 11,000 years ago. Incredibly, the divers found something even rarer the next day, a tooth from a saber-toothed tiger. Colombian mammoths lived in Florida between 2.6 million and 10,000 years ago, the same time as saber-toothed tigers. Along with the mammoth leg bone, the pair also found fossilized megalodon shark teeth, fish teeth, stingray spines, scallop shells, barnacles, pieces of the mammoth jaw, and vertebra, among others. Number 8. Giant Coral Reef Scientists discovered a 1,600-foot-tall coral reef taller than the Empire State Building, the Sydney Tower, and the Petronas Twin Towers in Australia's Great Barrier Reef. This was announced by scientists in the Schmidt Ocean Institute in October 2020. It was the first such find in over 120 years. The group live-streamed their reef exploration using an underwater robot to examine it. Offshore and separate from the rest of the reef system, the gigantic limestone tower emerges from the deep seabed and acts as a substrate for coral and sea life to grow and flourish. Nearly a third of a mile tall, the structure rises to within 130 feet of the ocean's surface. Researchers described the reef as blade-like. They said it measures nearly one mile wide, then rises 1,640 feet at its greatest height. By comparison, the Empire State Building stands 1,250 feet on the top floor. They've mapped seven other tall detached reefs in the area that have existed since the late 1800s, including the reef at Rain Island, which is an important nesting spot for green sea turtles. The Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef, covering 133,000 square miles. It includes 3,000 coral reefs, 600 continental islands, 300 coral caves, and about 150 mangrove islands. The reef is home to over 1,625 species of fish, 600 types of coral, 133 varieties of sharks and rays, over 30 species of whales and dolphins, and hundreds of other species. Number 7. The Ulu Burun Shipwreck What would you do if you bumped into tons of valuable minerals stacked under the sea? Well, I don't know what I'd do, but some divers knew what they would do. The Ulu Burun Shipwreck was found accidentally by a sponge diver in 1982 off the southwestern coast of Turkey. They discovered a vessel made of cedar dating from the 14th century BC, which is one of the world's oldest sea-going ships. Aboard the ship, among other cargo, were 10 tons of copper, Egyptian jewelry, ivory, and the oldest intact glass ingots and an Italian sword. The discovery has allowed historians to learn more about trade in the Mediterranean. The diverse cargo on board shows that the Mediterranean was the site of a lot more trading than initially thought. Such is the wealth of knowledge gained from the ship that Scientific American voted it one of the 10 greatest archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. They recovered it over 10 years in three-month-long periods of excavations. It was the deepest ship fully recovered at the time. It took a staggering 22,413 dives to bring up the entire Ulu Burun. Today, they house the wreckage in the Bodrum Museum in southern Turkey. On a scale of 1 to 10, how badly would you want to visit the museum and lay your hands on this historical piece of art? Let us know in the comments down below. Number 6. Two cars sunk for 40 years with dead bodies inside. In September 2013, police divers testing new sonar equipment in an Oklahoma lake discovered two cars that had been underwater for 40 years. They initially concluded that someone had stolen the cars, then simply dumped them in a lake. But when they opened the cars, a darker and more mysterious reason for their presence came to light. Each car held three skeletons. They believed the bodies inside one car, a 1969 Chevy Camaro, belonged to three teenagers who were last seen over 40 years ago. Jimmy Allen Williams, 16 who owned the car, and his 18-year-old friends Tom as Michael Rios and Leah Gale Johnson. They had supposedly been heading to a football game the night they disappeared. They believed the second car, a 1950 Chevy, to have had the bodies of three missing adults who were also last seen over 40 years ago, Nora Duncan, 58, her friend Alvy Porter, 69, and their friend Cleburne Hammock. It'll take a few years for forensic experts to identify the skeletons with complete certainty, but after 40 years, the find gives tantalizing hope for closure to the families of those missing. Do you think it was a case of cold-blooded murder or a mere accident? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Number 5. Japan's Record-Breaking Submarine they discovered a massive I-400 class submarine in August 2013 deeply seated 2,300 feet underwater off the coast of Hawaii. The I-400 was a huge Japanese submarine from World War II designed to hold three seaplane bombers that could strike at areas beyond the range of regular planes. The Japanese had plans for a fleet of 18 subs that could have potentially launched strikes against American cities, but these plans never came to fruition and they built only three. They didn't even use these as intended. They used them to carry fuel to islands in the Pacific. 
At 400 feet long, the I-400s were the world's largest submarines with a range of 37,500 miles. We did not beat them in size or range until American nuclear submarines in the late 1950s and early 1960s. The American Navy captured an I-400 near the end of the war and spent considerable resources studying the submarine's secrets. After a request from the Soviets to study the I-400 in 1946, the Americans hit it with three torpedoes and sent it back to the ocean's depths so the Soviets wouldn't learn from it. Number 4. 2,000-year-old intact Roman eye medicinal pill. In June 2013, a team of Italian scientists conducted a chemical analysis on some ancient Roman medicinal pills discovered in the Relizzo del Pozzino, a 2,000-year-old submerged shipping vessel that sank off the coast of Tuscany, revealing what exactly the ancient Romans used as medicine. The Roman shipwreck lay near the remains of the Etruscan city of Populonia, which at the time the ship foundered was a key port along sea trade routes between the west and east across the Mediterranean Sea. The archaeological superintendency of Tuscany Relito excavated the Del Pacino throughout the 80s and 90s, revealing a variety of fascinating cargo including lamps originating in Asian Minor, Syrian-Palestinian glass bowls, bronze jugs, ceramic vessels for carrying wine, and of particular interest to the remains of a medicine chest containing a surgery hook, a mortar, 136 wooden drug vials, and several cylindrical tin vessels, one of which had five circular medicinal tablets. The tin vessels had remained completely sealed, which kept the pills dry providing an amazing opportunity to find out exactly what substances they contained within them. The results revealed the pills contained several zinc compounds as well as iron oxide, starch, beeswax, pine resin, and other plant-derived materials. Based on their shape and composition, scientists have suggested that they used the tablets as a type of eye medicine. Number 3. 1,000-year-old Lion City under Chinese Lake Archaeologists were stunned at discovering an ancient city deep beneath an artificial lake in China described as the country's own Atlantis. The legend of the sunken city of Atlantis is a universal tale. Mentioned in ancient texts throughout history, it has been more recently fictionalized in books and films. Its story was told in two of Plato's dialogues, written about 360 BC. While many refuse to believe that Atlantis is fiction, they have found no evidence of its existence. However, they may yet find solace in China's ancient and lost under water civilization, the Lion City. Despite the city being submerged for centuries, the city remains fully intact. They carried the forced flooding out as part of the Chinese government's Great Leap Forward program, making way for the country's first hydropower plant. They created a beautiful landscape and a waterway containing over 1,000 islands. It sits at the bottom of the reservoir close to Chandao Lake, near the picturesque Wuxi Mountain. They are thought to have built it somewhere between 25 and 200 AD. The city was at one point one of China's most powerful and kept this status for centuries. In 2014, after the authorities realized the city was still intact, they allowed tourists to visit the area by diving. Much of the architecture in the lake dates to the 16th century and is one of the gems of Chinese craftsmanship. Its existing city walls also date from this period. Among the notable landmarks are its wide streets and 265 archways. The Lion City, or Shi Cheng, reached its zenith between 1368 and 1644 when the Ming Dynasty ruled China. Its opulence is unmistakable. There are five entry gates with an area of 62 football fields with six major streets paved with stones, all connected to each other. Despite holding clues to China's rich historical and cultural past, they flooded the Lion City in 1959. At the flick of a switch, they slowly submerged the metropolis. At its deepest point, it now sits 130 feet below the surface. History buffs and diving enthusiasts alike can now visit the city themselves. Don't be afraid to be one of them. Number 2. Elongated Human Skulls Discovered in a Mexican Cave A flooded sinkhole in southern Mexico that terrified local villagers was explored in 2014 by underwater archaeologists who found the submerged cavern littered with elongated skulls and human bones. The underwater cavern known as Sac Uayum is a cenote in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. A cenote is a natural pit resulting from the collapse of limestone bedrock that exposes groundwater underneath. The ancient Maya sometimes used them for sacrificial offerings. Sakuayum sits just outside the ruins of the ancient Maya city of Mayapan, about 25 miles south of Merida, the capital of the Mexican state of Yucatan. Mayapan was a major political center from the 12th to the 15th century AD and contained a city enclosed by a stone wall. Within the city walls, there were around 40 cenotes, which would have served as vital sources of water for the 17,000 residents believed to have lived there. However, Sakuayum is not a typical cenote, and local legends say that a feathered, horse-headed serpent guarded the mysterious cavern. 
Older residents of the nearby village tell stories of people seeing the serpent perching in a tree, leaping up, spinning around three times, and diving into the water. The villagers do not want to go near the site, and there's much fear surrounding what lies inside. To investigate the cenote, archaeologists spent two weeks diving into its submerged reaches. They discovered two chambers connected via a tunnel in the submerged cavern with bones scattered across the floors. Shockingly, the bones and skulls the researchers discovered aren't normal. They're elongated, which is consistent with many others found in burials from the the same period. They have found the skulls and remains to belong to males and females, adults and teenagers. But the question that remains unanswered is what were they doing there? They buried most residents of Mayapan under or near their houses, so this was not an ordinary cemetery. Researchers believe that they might have buried the dead here to await the next cycle of creation. Do you think that was the case? Let us know in the comments below. Number 1. A fish with a see-through skull. In late 2021, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, MBARI, shared footage of the barrel eye fish. This deep sea creature has a transparent forehead where you can see its glowing green eyes. The barrel eye fish is rarely spotted. According to MBARI, despite 5,600 dives and over 27,600 hours of video recordings by advanced remotely operated vehicles, marine scientists could only encounter the fish nine times. The MBARI website records they found this six inch long fish at a depth of 2,000 to 2,600 feet where the sunlight cannot penetrate. In 2009, researchers found barrel eye fish can rotate its eyes towards the front to see its food when eating. Number 10. Al Capone Moonshine Al Capone is well known for being the most infamous gangster in American history. During the national banning of alcohol known as Prohibition, Capone's Chicago operation made millions off of bootlegging, prostitution, and gambling. Capone dominated the organized crime scene and worked with partners in various regions to maintain his chokehold on the illegal liquor scene. A moonshine still believed to belong to the operations of the infamous 1920s era gangster was found in an area known as Hell Hole Swamp by archaeologists. The discovery was made in the woods of South Carolina, part of the Francis Marion National Forest. Among the objects found were the moonshine still, a garden hose, blocks, and metal scraps. These parts are just one of the several stills that archaeologists have connected to Benjamin Villaponto, a notorious associate of Al Capone. Catherine Parker, a researcher associated with the discovery, said the items were probably part of an illegal liquor distilling operation, remnants of an operation run by a notorious local bootlegger. Parker also included on her website that these items are often mistaken to be modern trash dumps to the untrained eye, especially since they often include items that are still commonly used and dumped, like the cinder blocks. An architectural historian determined that the blocks found here likely dated back to the 1920s and functioned as a supporting platform for a submarine-style liquor still, which remained in use for many years even after alcohol became legal again. This was due to a hefty $4 per gallon tax imposed by the state on legal liquor. According to Parker, the submarine-style liquor still, which can contain hundreds of pounds of rye, barley, water, and sugar, is raised over a fire and allowed to boil inside a metal container that, when connected by a hose, draws out alcohol vapors and condenses them into liquid. Villaponto owned a property close to the forest and was killed in 1926 during a bloody shootout by a rival gang of bootleggers. Villaponto was responsible for several busted distilleries found in the area and was working with Capone to run illegal liquor out of South Carolina during Prohibition prior to his violent end. Number 9. MS World's Discoverer The MS World's Discoverer is a cruise ship that was ultimately abandoned and left to rot in Roderick Bay of the Nagella Islands, where it still sits today. An entire cruise ship being abandoned is rather unusual, so how did this happen? The MS World's Discoverer was a large ship built with a length of 297 feet and a total of seven decks. The ship was launched on December 8, 1973, with a capacity of 137 passengers in 76 cabins. Its trouble began when it struck an underwater obstacle of reef and was ultimately abandoned in the Sandfly Passage of the Solomon Islands after roughly 25 years of service. After the incident in 2000, which hit this majestic beauty, the ship's captain sent a distress signal which was received in Honaira, Solomon Islands' capital city. Thankfully, no lives were lost as all passengers were dispatched to a passenger ferry sent for the rescue. The ship was brought into Roderick Bay where it was grounded. Today, the ship has been damaged by tidal activities and destroyed. During the time of its wreck, the Solomon Islands were experiencing a civil war and the ship was plundered extensively by the locals as well as other factions participating in the fighting. It now suffers surface rusting and loss of windows in its abandonment. Salvagers found the ship to have little value remaining thanks to the extensive destruction by the locals during the war and the only remaining function of the MS World Discoverer is to use it as a tourist attraction. Number 8. Queen Anne's Revenge the infamous pirate Edward Teach, more commonly known as Blackbeard, whose exploits are the stuff of legend, was the captain of a vessel known as the Queen Anne's Revenge. An 18th century ship with a length of 103 feet, the Queen Anne's Revenge records remain uncertain. 
Some believe it to be originally built for merchant service in Bristol, England in 1710. This 200-ton vessel, which was first used as a slave ship, was first acquired by the French Navy in November 1716 and was later sold by them for commercial purposes. Queen Anne's Revenge was captured by Blackbeard in 1717 near the island of St. Vincent in the West Indies. It was said to have more heavy cannons added by Blackbeard after its capture. Blackbeard only used the ship for less than a year despite winning numerous prizes with it as his flagship and selling off its cargo of slaves at Martinique. The remains of the wreck were discovered by a private firm in 1996, and reports stated that Blackbeard deliberately grounded the ship as an excuse to let go of the crew, several of which he abandoned on a small island nearby. At the wreckage site, up to 300,000 artifacts were recovered, and among those total a number of cannons identified. Up to 30 different cannons belonging to various origins including Sweden, England, and possibly France. Additional explorations in 2006 and 2007 led to more discoveries made. This information was able to confirm viral claims of the ship being the actual Queen Anne's Revenge, and in 2008 even more artifacts were discovered. These include loose ceramic, pewter fragments, lead strainer fragments, nesting weights, a sword guard, a cannon apron, a coin, and ballast stones. The most recent recovery was made in 2011 when the 1.4-ton remains of the ship were excavated and brought to the surface. These include various weapons such as the Lagrange or canister shot. This wreck has continued to yield fascinating pieces of history. Number 7. Ancient Coins Over 300 Roman imperial coins and a gold bar were found in an amphora, a type of jar once used by the Romans to transport liquids such as wine and olive oil by archaeologists. The discovery was made by construction workers during the excavation of the Cressoni Theater in the north of Milan in Italy. Reports from a coin expert revealed they were left in a way that they could be easily retrieved upon the occurrence of any disaster. She also explained that the arrangement of the coins in rows stacked like the modern banks could not belong to a private individual, but rather a bank or some other commercial development. Experts, however, have claimed that the worth of the coins is somewhere between $800,000 to $1.5 million. One of the incredible unique pieces dates back to sometime before 474 AD and features Emperor Honorius, Valentinian III, Leon I, Antonio, and Labio Severo. The Cressoni Theater was opened in 1807 and it experienced its closure in the year 1997. So when was the amphora placed there? How did it get there? Who deposited it? Why was it left there? Why was it abandoned? And why did no one come for it? Just whose stash of gold was this? The answers remain unclear. Historical records show that during the period when the coins were likely stashed, the Roman Empire was experiencing chaos and collapse. Perhaps similar to modern doomsday preppers, the person hiding this stash of gold was attempting to prepare for war, famine, or other potential fallout from the collapse of the ruling government. Number 6. SS City of Adelaide The SS City of Adelaide, a passenger steamship, was launched in 1863 from Glasgow, Scotland. This steamship was built by J&G Thompson in Govan, Glasgow, and was later converted to a cargo transport while it carried passengers between Sydney, Melbourne, and Honolulu. It sailed for 50 years before it caught fire in 1912, which lasted for several days and ran aground in Cockle Bay, Magnetic Island in Australia. During World War II, the city of Adelaide was used as a bombing target for the RAAF, and in 1942, the vessel experienced a bomb impact which led to its crash as its fuselage disintegrated, instantly killing three RAAF officers and a U.S. Navy officer aboard. The vessel today has become deteriorated and known as a wreck full of mangrove trees growing mostly undisturbed. It has since become a bit of an Instagram sensation, though it's certainly off the beaten path. Number 5. BOS 400 Shipwreck The BOS 400 Shipwreck is a ship that at one time was known to have the largest floating crane in Africa capable of lifting 1,200 tons. The BOS 400 unfortunately ran aground in Maori Bay during a storm on the South African coast in 1994. This large monster experienced a massive hit with a rock on its way to Cape Town, having almost reached its destination when the tow rope suffered a breakage. Due to the heavy storm present, the lines of the barge experienced disconnection, the crew was left to abandon the ship as they were airlifted to safety. The BOS 400 experienced a total loss despite attempts by the crew. Today, the large crane and part of its structure are still visible above sea level. This eerie and haunting abandoned oil rig is fascinating to see, though the local government has had to explicitly inform potential explorers of the area not to climb the extremely dangerous wreckage. Would you take the long trek to set eyes on the BOS 400 shipwreck? Share in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing and unusual content. Number 4. Chatillon Car Graveyard Deep in a forest in southern Belgium surrounded by dirt roads, fields, a farm, and dense thick trees enough to prevent anyone from seeing what lies hidden within, there lies an eerie abandoned car graveyard. The rusty automobiles were found near the village of Chatillon, home to one of the largest car graveyards in the world, just a short distance from the border with France. These vehicles are said to have belonged to U.S. soldiers who were stationed in the area during World War II. 
When it came time to return home, shipping their cars, however, seemed expensive, hence the reason they were abandoned even after the conclusion of the war. And to save cost, these U.S. soldiers simply drove the cars right into the woods and left them parked there in rows. At least, that's the popular version of the story. Car enthusiasts with a keen eye, however, would likely notice that the photos included cars that had clearly been abandoned in the infamous car graveyard were clearly left from a time after the war. It's possible that some of the cars made their way to the area via World War II soldiers, but perhaps that story has been embellished for a sense of romanticism. While the cars remained abandoned there for many years, the risk of damage to the environment proved too great. Cleaned up in 2010 by people who may never know the story behind these long-existing abandoned objects, the site remains a calm place today and further seen as a place for tourists. Number 3. Bartini Beriev VVA-14 Plane The Bartini Beriev VVA-14 is ultimately the result of the ongoing competition between the U.S. and the Soviet Union out supplying each other with military equipment. The contest was regarded at the time as the most expensive arm race in history. The Bartini Beriev VVA-14 plane was developed during the early 1970s by the Soviet Navy to combat airstrikes, which interestingly has its other features as an object capable of functioning in both water and air which makes it possible to take off from water and fly at high speed over long distances. As an instrument of war, it was known to have conducted 107 flights with a total flight time of 103 hours. The Bartini was primarily made to subvert U.S. submarines and any missile strikes. The abandoned aircraft is named after its Italian-born designer Robert Bartini and was flown by a crew of three pilots. Of the two prototypes built, only one survived and it sits near the Russian Air Force Museum located outside Moscow. The abandoned one, however, has its wings missing, which serves as a reminder of wasted time and effort. Despite Robert Bartini's death in 74, campaigns have been led by some aviation enthusiasts to revive the plane. Number 2. Redbird Subway Car In the late 70s and early 80s, New York City was a very different place. In order to combat graffiti, the iconic Redbird Subway cars were painted their very distinctive bright red color. The Red Bird, found standing in a field located in the middle of New York, was once considered one of the fastest, running on most of the numbered IRT lines for four decades. Initially entering service in various colors, these cars received the new paint scheme between 84 and 89. Today, repurposed Red Bird cars serve as garbage trains, rail adhesion cars, or rider cars on locomotive-hauled work trains, while others have been preserved by various museums. One of the places we can find the Red Bird subway car is the Transit Museum, while another is stationed in Queens as a center for tourist attraction in Kew Garden. Number 1. Mahino Shipwreck An iconic shipwreck can be found off Fraser Island, an island where nature's lush beauty of green trees offers something for every traveler. Aside from its beautiful scenic views, however, this island's waters are also known for swallowing many of the large vessels that have ventured nearby. Some of these vessels have become a draw for tourists seeking the unique and unusual. Among those that have experienced disaster on this island is the SS Mahano. Mahano is a word from Maori, a native language of New Zealand, which means island. Originally an ocean liner, the SS Mahano had some pretty luxurious accommodations. Once able to take on 420 passengers, the ship featured a smoking room, dining area, and a music room that even included a classic Beckstein grand piano. The SS Mahano is acknowledged as the first turbine-driven steamer in the world. Long before its ultimate demise off Fraser's coast, the ship was first used as a hospital ship where casualties of war were carried for treatment. Today, it makes up a part of the exquisite landscape of this vacation spot. Thanks for checking out today's video. Are you into exploring abandoned spaces or objects? We'd love to hear about your discoveries in the comments below. That's all for today. Make sure to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.